Hey, this is Kelly Phillips for paperbeadrollers.com. I love shopping for pattern papers, but sometimes you just can't find the exact colors that you need. That's when it's time for us crafters to simply make our own patterns. Dry brushing is a technique that is super easy, takes very little skill, and it can be done with just a few simple supplies. You'll need a one inch paintbrush, a cup of water, and some paper towels for cleanup. I'm using Artist Loft acrylic metal paints. I'll be using old gold, metallic black, metallic blue, and metallic orange. I bought an entire set of these at one of the big box stores. Now you can use other types of paint, but I recommend sticking with the acrylics because it does become water resistant once it dries. So it holds up really well to being glazed over once it's a bead. It doesn't smear or bleed into the bead glaze. For the paper, I'm using regular 65 pound cardstock in red and lime green, but you can do this on any paper. It works very well for recycled boxes, like uh, food boxes that you're cutting up to recycle and make into beads. Before you start painting, you need to make a decision about what direction you will cut your strips. You're going to stroke on your paint in the opposite direction, then you'll cut the paper. Now that's because you want all of the colors to show up along the edges of the strip. So if you're cutting in this direction, you'll brush the paint on in this direction. Because if you cut and brush in the same direction, you'll end up with the same color along the entire edge of the strip, and you won't get as much variation at the end in your... So again, this technique is called dry brushing. It means you don't wet down your brush. You can squirt the paint directly onto your brush, or you can grab a paint pellet or just a scrap of paper and dab the paint around a little bit just to spread it out on the brush so you don't get big globs on your paper. And then just start brushing onto your page. You can put it on thicker in some areas, thinner in others. This is entirely your creation, so do anything you want with it. And when you think you have enough of your first color, you can just go right into the next color and you don't even have to wash out your brush. Now you may want to test that in a small area first. If your paint has a higher water content than mine, you may get a little bit of muddying between the colors and that could end up not so good but in most cases you can just start right into the next color. Because it's dry brushing, the paints won't mix and muddy very much. I don't recommend cleaning out your brush with water in between the colors because then you'll be introducing water into the mix. And again, we don't want that. If it bothers you to use the same brush without cleaning it, then it's better to just completely switch brushes, use a completely new brush for your new color, than to use a wet brush. Now make sure that you're taking the color all the way to the edge of the paper. The edge of the paper is going to be the tip of your bead, and it's one of the most visible spots on the bead, so we want to get that covered well. And I didn't do such a great job of covering that with the gold, so I may need to go back and fill some of that in. All right, I think we're done with this. Now I'm going to switch brushes and use my blue and orange metallics on the lime green paper. I'm starting with my lighter color, the metallic orange. Now for this project, I am just brushing these on randomly, but you could also do it in patterns. You could make stripes or circles or zigzags. I mean, you name it. I 
Again, make sure you get the paint all the way to the edges. It doesn't have to cover completely. You can let paper show through, but you do want to get a good variation all the way to the edge. And you don't have to be neat with this because that final design, the overall design, is not going to be evident once we get the strips cut and the beads rolled. Be more concerned about getting the color distributed over the paper than you are about neatness. So in this spot, I have a larger spot of green. So the beads I make out of the piece are just gonna have more green in them and that's okay. So now I'm gonna start my blue and I'm not going to switch brushes. Now, if you're a very particular crafter, you can go ahead and switch brushes. Now, I'm not, I tend to be a messy crafter. I don't mind mashing up the colors and making a little bit of a mess. Like I said, just don't rinse and use a wet brush. Okay, I think this is looking great. It kind of reminds me of the 1980s when me and my friends used to paint our bedroom walls. I know our parents were thrilled. We would just mash paint on the walls. I'm sure it looked terrible whenever we tried to paint back over a solid color. I know our parents were just thrilled with us for that face. Okay, I'm loving the way this looks and I think it's time to stop here and let this dry. I'm gonna set this aside and clean up the paint. Thanks to the magic of video, these pages will dry in a super fast split second and I'll be back with you to cut them into strips. Our papers are dry and ready to cut. So I use the Brother Skin and Cut machine to cut my strips. Now, I used to cut strips by hand, but when I got this machine, it completely changed my life. It allows me to cut more strips in less time, and it also gives me a very consistent sizes so that my finished beads are more uniform and they look a little more polished. I love this machine. Mine is not the latest model. There is a newer one out. Mine is the CM350. But the new one does have some, some neat new features on it that you may want to check out. But the basic processes are the same. So, and I'm just going to give you an overview of how I cut strips. This is a scan and cut mat. It has a sticky surface and I stick the paper down to the mat and we'll feed it into the machine to be cut. So we'll do the green. Line up the paper according to the marks on the mat. I usually just line it up here in the corner. We're going to connect the machine to the laptop and we'll call up the file and send it over through the USB cable. Okay, now we're looking at my laptop screen. This is the Brother Canvas software, which is free to download and use. You can create your own cutting files with this software, or you can purchase files from various sites on the internet and import them into Canvas to use with the Scan and Cut. I sell these digital files on paperbeadrollers.com and when you purchase, you get several file types. You get a PDF file that you could print right onto the paper with your home printer. You get SVG files, which is a cutting file that can be used with most of the cutting machines on the market, like the Cricut. And you also get the Brother Scan and Cut FCM files, just because that's the machine I have, so I make them for you. Um, you can check out the SVG and template section in the shop at paperbeadrollers.com to see all of the different paper bead digital templates that are available for download. I'm gonna open the Canvas software and show you how to import an SVG, save the FCM file, and transfer it to the machine. Instructions for downloading the Canvas software is in the user guide that comes with the machine. Once you have it installed, it looks like this. If you purchase any of the digital file templates from paperbeadrollers.com, you have the FCM file, which is the file we'll transfer to the machine for cutting. But you also get that SVG file, which is what you would import into Canvas in case you want to make any changes or modifications. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, you'll click the SVG icon and browse to the SVG file that you want to import. In this case, I'm choosing the standard triangle 3 quarter inch by 11 point that came in my standard triangle digital download template from paperbeadrollers.com. The file appears on your canvas. Now we could go ahead and just cut at this point, or if I need to move the position a bit to match my paper on the mat or resize the strips, I can go ahead and do that and play around with it. So I'm just going to leave it like this. This is perfect. And I can choose File, Export, FCM File. So there is a USB cord that connects the Brother Scan and Cut to my laptop. As soon as I plug that cord into my USB port, it automatically opens up a file window. Here it is. Now I can just drag that FCM file I saved over from where I saved it into this new window that represents the Scan and Cut machine. 
and that's how you transfer the file to the machine using the USB method. Now that the file is in the machine, I'll switch back over to the camera view and we'll do some cutting. On the scan and cut machine, you hit pattern, save data. And of course, mine always falls down. Sorry about that. And then we'll hit the computer icon because that's where we're pulling the file from. Now we just hit our file and here it is on the screen. Now I'll load the mat. You always make sure your paper is pressed down tight before you load. Line up the mat so it's straight against the rollers, and then you press this little grid button here next to your screen, paper strips. So I'll make sure my paper is stuck down one more time, and we'll go ahead and get this machine started. Now it says here that this will take two minutes, so I'm going to speed up the video for you. Now I can hit my button to unload my mat. And the machine came with tools like this little spatula. Although a lot of times I don't even need it. I can just kind of bend my mat over and peel the strips right off. I just love this machine. Since I got it, I do so many more beads than I did before. And you can use this for all types of paper. I can do cereal boxes, something thicker like that, to magazines, which are super thin. I mean, there's even a deep cut blade for things like chipboard. So you can do all kinds of materials, not just cardstock on this. I'm gonna go cut the red sheet and then I'll be back and we'll roll some beads. For these beads, I'll use the 1 8 inch roller from paperbeadrollers.com, which is the blue handled roller. Let's go ahead and roll some beads and see what these look like. You can see as I'm rolling how the color is going across the strips like we talked about. That allows the color variations to show along the edges. So you can see why if we had cut our strips in the same direction that we brushed on the paint, our beads would not have been nearly so colorful. I have found that this dry brush technique works best with beads that are wider than they are tall. So for example, it doesn't work as well on a saucer bead. That's because with the saucer bead, you're mostly seeing the edge of the strip and there's no paint on the edge of the strip. The paint is on the top of the strip. You can also see what I meant about not being too particular about the exact pattern that you make with the paint. You don't really see a pattern in this, but you do see the color distribution. So as you're painting, think more about where you place the color on the page and getting it spread around in the right places to get the end look you want. Also think about how thick the strips, the stripes are that you're painting, how much color you're putting in one section of the paper, because that will make more color appear in one spot of the bead. I am going to use the Judikins Diamond Glaze to give my beads that beautiful shine and durability that they'll need to hold up well as jewelry. I use small skewers to hold the beads and I just brush the glaze on one bead at a time.
Then I stick the skewer into a foam block while the beads dry. The diamond glaze dries very quickly. Usually by the time I'm done with my batch, I could go back and start my second coat. For most beads, two coats is enough. On occasion, if I'm making something that is going to be banged around a bit more, I will use more coats. The more coats of diamond glaze you put on, the more plastic-like the beads look. So it just depends on what look you're going for. And there you have it, the pretty look of dry brushed painted paper beads. I hope you have fun experimenting with this technique. Try it on different types of papers and let me know how it goes. Make sure to hop on over to paperbeadrollers.com and sign up for the mailing list. I've got some exciting new things coming up that you're not going to want to miss and email subscribers get it first. See you next time.